Hello, we are live. Look at that on time and everything. Woohoo! Awesome. Hello, everybody. Come on in and join the circle. I need to rearrange my lights because they're kind of all off to the side, so there's nothing right behind me. So. Thank you for joining me. Welcome. This is Patrick uh, from Perching Wolf Studios. And it is time for our weekly Monday mini medicine card reading. So come on in and I'm playing with my light. Wow, that works. All right, thank you for joining me. I just got home. Um, some of you know who've been with watching for a while. Jeez, I've been doing this for like a year now, over a year. Crazy, crazy. But um, I used to do this like during the pandemic. I actually started doing this because of the pandemic when the lockdown happened. Um, I wanted to give people an extra bit of guidance for their week. So I started doing this on Monday afternoons and like 3 or 3.30 or something like that, you know, especially for the people who were in lockdown, who weren't going to work and didn't have a lot of other things to do or whatever, I thought hey, let's do readings. So I started doing it then. And then a while back, I got a gig. And on Mondays now, it just happens Monday was the day that was available. <coughs> I started doing readings at Crescent Moon Gifts down in Tacoma on Mondays. And so I switched it. I still wanted to do it on Mondays, right? Because I wanted it to be the guidance for the whole week. And so my only choice was to wait until after um, my readings. So I've been doing readings all day down in Tacoma and then I have to race home to try to be in time to do this, which is one of the highlights of my week. I, I just really, really enjoy this. So I probably, if, if you look forward to it, I probably look forward to it even more. Um, so I'm just starting some sage so I can smudge my cards. I don't always smudge my cards just in, you know, total transparency, but it feels appropriate after doing readings for a whole bunch of people at the store just to smudge my cards to clear any energy, of course, that they picked up during the day, but also just to clear them as a way of distinguishing between, I don't know, work and pleasure, doing them for payment versus doing them tonight in service, but it just feels appropriate. So I always smudge my cards before we do tonight's Monday night session. So thank you everybody for joining me welcome um those of you who have been off and on for uh, over a year thank you so much for your persistence and sticking with me i so appreciate it and those that are newer thank you so much for giving me a try like i said i enjoy this so much so what do we do though that you enjoy so much i can hear you asking yourself we pull cards. I work with 
the medicine card deck. And so each card has a separate animal totem on it. And so it's similar to the tarot or to any other card deck, but it works with the energies of the animal totems. And being your friendly neighborhood shaman, I relate to the animal spirits more than I do to the archetypes and the arcana and all that, which I still enjoy. I love all of that. I love anything that smacks of mythology and story. But to me, the animal spirits are vibrant and alive. And for me, the cards are just kind of a jumping off place for me to connect to the actual spirit of the animal and I don't like most of these I don't have any clue what the book says about them because I've been doing this for so long and tapping into what the animals tell me their messages that I don't know I, I, I swear I learn something every reading I do different aspects or nuances come out that I didn't think of before. So I'm always learning too. I love learning new stuff. So what we do, okay, I go off on tangents quite a bit like I just did. And um, I pull three cards. So your job is to choose a number between one and three. Although you can pull more, you can pick more than one. Um, oh, Thalia wants some sage. Let's, let's sage you guys too. How about that? Hmm. Oh, and I have my swan feather up here. All right, so. There you go. Clear that energy purify I will take a bit of that as well all right so much better thank you for the suggestion Thalia all right so where was I so pick three car three or pick a number between one and three um, or you can pick two numbers or you can pick all three um, it's up to you it is an abundant universe you are unlimited you can choose as many as you want though if you choose five or six or seven of them it's kind of wasted energy because I only do three so here we go all right and then I've been for those that maybe haven't been here for a while um if i do not get as verbose as i normally do and talk a lot if i can kind of just keep the the messages for the animals short and sweet and we have time at the end i like to do a guided meditation at the end so that you can get it straight from the animal what their message is for you because I can sit here and pull cards all day long tell you what they mean tell you what you know the textbook definition is or whatever but um, that's still hearsay then you're still trusting my heart and interpretation over your own and I don't want your power. I want to empower you. And so the more I can do to help you hear your own heart, to hear your own guidance, the better off we all are. So how's that? All right. I keep meaning to stop and then I keep, <laughs> keep shuffling and all right.
So choose a number, one, two, one, two, or three, or two and three, or one and two, or one and three, or one, two, and three. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> so if one was your number, you got the squirrel. What is moose and squirrel? Squirrel is about resourcefulness. Um, and it's interesting because the more I do these cards, the more I connect with the animals, the more I realize these different like similarities between them. Like, what are those charts they have with the circles that intersect? It's kind of like that, just like you have three or four animals where they kind of intersect on certain meanings, but then they have a nuance, you know, all their own that's different. Um, but squirrel is among those that one of their key messages is abundance. And Squirrel's nuance of that is resourcefulness. <clears throat> um, it's not, squirrels do <laughs> squirrel away nuts and acorns and everything, but the whole point is not the hoarding of wealth or the setting aside for the future. Um, squirrel doesn't care about the winter. When it's summertime, fall time, squirrel is just enjoying himself, running around gathering nuts and burying them because that's what squirrels do. That's what a squirrel's heart cries out to do. And so they're in the moment that's like, oh my God, an acorn, and they bury it. And it brings them joy, right? Oh my God, another acorn. And so there's this... Um, mental framework of, um, I guess, open-mindedness, like able to receive, like seeing the gift in things. So like like um, someone is fond of saying the happy surprises, knowing that this is an abundant universe, which means that you are in the flow of that abundance. You know, even our money is called currency because it's a current. It's supposed to flow. So when you get people hoarding it, no names, but holding it apart from the rest, then there's not as much of a flow or currency, right? And so it's about being in that currency, being in that flow of the universe. And abundance and resourcefulness is not just money and wealth. It's everything. It's your food, shelter, enjoyment, friends, adventures, whatever. Everything is that flow. And knowing you're in the flow, then the abundance is that when you need something, it shows up. That is the abundance. Um, it's not keeping enough in the bank so that you're good on a rainy day. Like I said, Squirrel doesn't think about the winter that's coming up. We try to say he does, and we have to, like, put, you know, like, squirrel things away for a rainy day. We have to squirrel things away for the winter because someday we might need it when Squirrel is in the moment, enjoying the gift of the universe of this biggest acorn that he's ever seen and doing what squirrels do, doing what squirrels are called to do and burying it by being in the moment come winter time and he gets hungry he's like oh my god i had that big old acorn buried out there i'm gonna go eat it now <clears throat> the being being supplied for the winter is a side effect of living in the moment here and now doing what you enjoy here and now prepares you it, it is a resource for the future. And when the future comes, whatever seeds you planted in the moment, in this moment, may have come to fruition in the future, and then you get to eat that nut or acorn that you buried, if that makes sense. So, the squirrels 
also they play everything they do is play and so they're enjoying themselves they're having adventures they're chasing each other racing up and down trees and chattering and they're enjoying themselves they're not nose to the grindstone trying to make sure they have enough for the winter that's a very puritanical view of the world a very puritanical filter to see the world and it doesn't serve us it doesn't serve you open your mind to see it's like it's it's as simple as you know the old cliche of, of counting your blessings when you're grateful for things that opens the door for the universe to bring you more when you're grateful for your blessings when you're grateful for what you have and what comes to you <clears throat> that opens the door for more to come in if you're stingy you're basically cutting off that flow from the universe thinking that your abundance has to come from one or two different sources right when your only source of abundance is creator is source energy it might come through other avenues in the physical world other people other projects or whatever but that true source of abundance is that clear channel between you and creator allowing that spirit to move through you and into the world and then it brings in that opening up to that it it reflects in the world as abundance coming to you in whatever form is needed at the moment it's not about saving up and and i'm not saying that there's nothing i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having a bank account of having money you know having a reservoir of money to work with that's not what i'm saying but it's by just being in the moment it's about the moment don't sacrifice your your day now on the chance that your future may or may not be better right now is the only moment now is the only time um so yeah so be resourceful enjoy yourself open yourself to the gifts of the universe and more will be given to you it's a game it's fun you know and like a video game mentioning games just like in a video game everything you need on whatever level you're on is there you might have to figure out how to get it you might have to be resourceful and know how to get it learn new skills to acquire it but if you need money for for weapons there's ways to get the money if there if you need nourishment whatever game you're playing my my default is um legend of zelda ocarina of time i don't really play video games um that one is my favorite though that's one that i do um but so everything you need is right there it's a matter of opening up to receive it all right number two if two is your card you got the salmon. Salmon is so cool. <coughs> um, salmon, I know this deck is mostly like Native American influenced. The woman who, Jamie Sams, who created it um, was Native American associated with it, a number of different tribes. But so the, the cars themselves have kind of a Native American influence and they're all native animals of the americas and so it's it's kind of a lot of the native american influence but having celtic heritage of my own i know that salmon according to celtic mythology is the oldest and the wisest of animals um it just so happens that long ago before time there was a pond and over this pond there were hazelnut trees and the hazelnuts would drop into the water and the salmon would come up and eat them and apparently I do not know where this comes from but apparently hazelnuts hold 
the wisdom of the universe. And so the salmon, by eating the hazelnuts, became the wisest of animals. So, um, so eat lots of hazelnuts. I don't know. That's just the Celtic, um, an interesting Celtic mythology part of the salmon. But if that's your card, it means it, it can, it, it, There's this ancient wisdom that you can tap into. There's this ancient, you are older than time. You have always been here. Not necessarily here in this three-dimensional world, but who you are is, is Nutella a smart food? Yes. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so salmon carries this ancient wisdom from before time began, and you have been here since before time began. We are all part of the same energy. We are <clears throat> like, um, how could I forget? Alan Watts, how can I forget his name? He's one of the most influential in my life, but Alan Watts talks about how just as the ocean waves, the universe peoples. And so we are each like a wave on the ocean. We're like this indiv individualized identity. But we are also part of the bigger ocean. <clears throat> and so salmon brings in that wisdom, that, that unbroken wisdom from your essence of how of that time before time it's there ready for you to tap into it so um and i just keep hearing ancestors it's like if that's your card um it might be time especially if if you are of like british irish celtic heritage to tap into that ancestral um, wisdom and knowledge because it's ready to be reborn into this world and it's like the salmon returning home to spawn that wisdom is returning home into your heart and it's ready to be born into this world again Anyway, that's just part of what I was getting with salmon. That is interesting. That doesn't always come up. But also salmon is, like I just said, it's about going home. You, if salmon comes up as your guide, you're guaranteed to get where you're going. Um, there is always a happy ending. Um, and so when you know you're going to get there, like you're here, this is where you're going, everything in between those, those two points becomes an adventure because no matter, no matter what comes up in between those two, you're going to come through them, right? I used to, even before I knew anything about... Um, I was raised Catholic and all I knew was Catholicism and granted I was always kind of on the more mystical end of that spectrum but still even before I knew anything about shamanism about manifesting or anything like that when I was a kid like six seven eight something like that um, I used to, I, I've got four siblings, I'm the oldest, and so my, it was my responsibility, or so I thought, to keep tabs on everybody when we would go places, especially really crowded places like the Minnesota State Fair. Um, 
And so I would walk behind everyone and I would try to be, make sure that no one got lost or wandered off. And I would get, I, I've been, I've, I'm a natural born worrier. And I was always getting anxious, like, what if something happens? What if I get lost and I can't find my way home? What if one of my siblings gets lost and we can't find them? And so what I learned to do before I ever knew about manifesting or shamanism or anything like that, I just saw a little orb go, um, I would picture myself in bed that night. Like we were out at the fair during the day. If I could imagine myself at night in my bed, I could feel the covers over me. I could feel the pillow under my head and I could feel myself relaxing to fall asleep then I knew we were all going to be okay. Because if I was asleep, if I was going to sleep, if I was feeling relaxed in bed, then I knew that everybody made it home okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sleeping. We'd be all up and frantic and trying to figure things out, etc. So, because I knew that I would be safe at home in my bed at the end of the day, I could let down my guard a little bit more. I could relax a little bit more, stand down from guard duty, and enjoy myself. And so just like that, salmon guarantees that you're getting home, that you're going, getting to where you're going, like your origin, like the pure, authentic essence of who you truly are. And so when you know you're going to get there, when you're guaranteed you're going to get there, then everything between up until that point is an adventure because each bend of the river is not oh my god is there something around the corner that's going to kill me and keep me from getting home um it's like okay whatever's ahead around the next bend is going to be a learning experience i wonder how i'm going to come through it it becomes adventure because you're guaranteed the happy ending you know whatever is coming up in front of you, you're going to have the means to get through it. So relax and trust your heart. Trust that inner compass to get you home, you know, and your, 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 that compass telling you which way to go, just like salmon, others are going to look at you and think, oh my God, they're crazy. Where the heck are they going? They're going backwards, right? Like salmon swimming upstream. Well, salmon doesn't fight. There's some fighting of the currents, etc. But it's not a like white knuckle ride the whole way. Salmon sees the undercurrents, the little places where the, the currents kind of flow backwards or the eddies or the whirlpools. And they, they'll go and they'll rest in the places along the side where there's still water. And then they'll, but they see pathways that no one else sees. And it is those currents that they're actually following. And so trust your own path. Trust your own heart to guide you along your path. No matter which direction it's going. Like I said, if that is your medicine, you're going to go backwards compared to some other people. Um, but the good news is that you're not going to get there on your own. You have those eddies and um, different currents that most people can't see that you ride home. And even jumping over the waterfalls, the, at the base of every waterfall are whirlpools. And that's what the salmon swim in. They get, you know, they might come in with some speed, hit those whirlpools and slingshot up the falls. They're not just, mm, I gotta run and jump. They're not jumping of their own energy. <coughs> They're using the currents in front of them in order to further them. So trust spirit to get you there. Trust when you open to spirit, when you trust those pathways, Spirit shows up to carry you, you know, it's kind of like that whole thing with the the footprints in the sand thingy where there's two sets of footprints and then there's one set of footprints. 
<laughs> and then there's my favorite meme, one of my favorite memes about, Jesus, why is there only one set of footprints? And Jesus says, because the sand people are elusive and they walk single file to hide their numbers. So, but spirit will carry you. You can trust that. And whereas in the West, again, like I mentioned with squirrel, there's that puritanical um, filter that we look at them with. It's like they're fighting. They're fighting. We have to knuckle down and fight our way home. We have to... We have to bang down the doors. We have to fight and bash, bash through all the barriers. No, no, stop it right now. <laughs> um, in other countries, like in the Netherlands, I believe it is, the root word for salmon is the same root word for somersault because they look at the salmon and they, they, they see them jumping up waterfalls they see them swimming against the current. It's like, oh my God, that is such a joyful fish. They're jumping and they're leaping and they watch their kids somersaulting on the lawns, thinking that is the same energy that that fish has. And so in other countries, it's, it, they're, <clears throat> it's recognized that it is the joy of this fish that allows him to jump the falls and such, right? So always go toward the joy, go toward the path of least resistance, which is kind of funny to say, because usually the, the path of least resistance is the water flowing toward the ocean. But for salmon, the least resistance is the currents that are going up against, up not against the current, but that are carried in the opposite direction, the underflows and stuff. So anyway, number three, if three is your card, We've got the lizard. Lizard. Lizard is <coughs> the dreamer. Okay, if that's your card, then what you're being asked to do right now, your, your, <laughs> your mission of action is to daydream. It's the action that's called for is inaction. It's time to dream. It's time to, like I did with the creative visualization, making myself safe in my bed every night that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's time to create the world that you want to live in. It's time to create the reality that you want by dreaming it into existence. There will be time later to act on it, to bring the physical components together. But right now, it's, it's time to focus on the imagery, the way it feels. You know, um, imagine what you want your world to look like. And you don't have to figure out all the nooks and crannies of that reality. You don't have to figure out the dimensions you know, this many inches by this many inches by whatever. Um, the most important component is the emotional one. We can think and picture and visualize all we want, but if we're missing that, that emotional aspect, then it's not, number one, going to be as powerful. It's going to be kind of hit and miss. But from the emotional standpoint, that's where we're actually... We're not just thinking and conceptualizing, we're actually putting ourselves into that reality. And so you bring as many senses as you can. Sight, think of what it looks like, think about what it feels like, tastes, um, what are the other senses? Smells, everything. You know, the more senses you can bring to it, the more presence an immediacy you can bring to that dream, the quicker and easier it is going to manifest. And like I said, you don't have to have all the details figured out. You know, it's, it's a co-creative venture between you and spirit. You know, I mean, we can make a list of exactly 
what house we want, how many rooms, how many dimensions, like not how many dimensions, the dimensions of every room and, and we can figure it out to the nth degree, but then there's no room for creativity. Then there's no room for surprises. Um, and we want to have, you know, it's like happy surprises, like I mentioned earlier with Squirrel, right? It's like we have the destination. It's we're, we're clicking that destination into our GPS, our intention, our destination, what we want to manifest. But there's enough room for the universe to tell you how to get there and then just surprise you, you know, one of the best things to put at one of the best some of okay how do I put one of the best phrases to say after you're working on manifesting something and you know it's like so be it is to say this or something better because we can't always imagine what is the best if we're going on our own imagination trying to get there on our own it's going to be less than what it could be. We have to leave room for spirit to step in and blow our minds, okay? Because it's that mind-blowing stuff that really anchors the reality of the spiritual path. It's the surprises, the things that you wouldn't imagine when they happen that's like, it makes you stop. It brings you present into the moment because you're like, holy crap, I could never have even imagined this. This is even better than I thought it would be, right? So what I do, <clears throat> rather than trying to imagine every little detail, I focus on the feeling of relief, the feeling, <sighs> that out breath, that exhale, like finally it's here, <sighs> whatever it is. And so I'm there and I feel the relief of finally manifesting it after all the time it took to get there. And so then the dream can take a life of its own and create nuances and differences. And then if it's not exactly what you want, you get to tweak the dream. You say, okay, I was asking for this but I'm realizing that doesn't fit in so much with this other part that I manifested. So let's take and, and change. I don't need this in it anymore, but I want this other thing, you know? So it's an ongoing process. We're never actually get there. Um, we always have desires and passions. Those are our compass on where to go, what to manifest. And we always, we never, there is never an end game. There is never a destination. You know, until we leave this plane. And even then, it's like, ooh, I did it this way la that last time. But what if I came back, but I had this other limitation or um, qualification or whatever? How would I do it this way? Right? And so it's like there's always, we always want that creative input from the universe. Now. To get to those dreams, one thing that I realized about Lizard that's been coming up lately is that, so I'm talking about the dreaming because, you know, Lizard loves to just bask in the sun all day long, just stillness, just sits, it doesn't move. But when he needs to move, it's like zip. It's like no inertia, there's no warm up period. He goes from zero to 60 in no time flat, right? So, this isn't a thing like you have to daydream. Okay, now step two, I need to do this. <clears throat> step three, I need to do this to get up to speed. No, it's like, boom. It's like you daydream, boom, <laughs> you're moving, you know, um, and things manifest. Now, one thing about Lizard, in order to get to that dream, there may be something you need to give up, just like the lizard losing his tail, but know that whatever you need to let go of to manifest a dream 
will grow back. If it's truly part of who you are, if it's really necessary to you, it will come back. Just like the lizard's tail grows back. He drops his tail to elude a predator, but that tail grows back. And so if you have to, you know, in order to get someplace else, you might have to lighten the load. You might have to change, and that might be just changing your thinking, opening up to different possibilities and letting go of old thought processes. But if those are truly part of who you are, it will come back. Because you are the creative force in your world. You are the co-creative force in your world. And you can manifest anything you need, anything you want, anything you desire. So you're never stuck. You're never trapped. There is always a solution. There is always a way through. Um, there is, it's like that whole thing about, um, I think it was Wayne Dyer who said, what is it about with, all, with God all things are possible that you don't understand? You know, we try to put limits on things. We try to say, oh, well, I can do this much, but I, I, that's beyond my capabilities. No, you are a divine child of goddess, God, creator. We are endowed with the same creative abilities. We can do anything. There is nothing off limits. There is nothing we cannot do. Now the thing becomes, what do we want to do that is in harmony with who we are, with our community, our world? Like, you know, we can manifest this slightly sarcastic political nuance, but we can manifest a spaceship to go to the stars, but that's not in harmony with helping out our neighbors. It's not, you know, we want to manifest, we want to dream from our heart for the highest good of ourselves because the highest good of us is the highest good of everyone around us. We are all connected. And so if we're creating dreaming from the ego, wanting to accomplish these things to be better than anyone else, to prove that we're worthy, that we're better and more gifted or whatever it is, that's counterproductive. You can still manifest those things, but there is a karmic undertone to that. There is, um, the word that my guide just gave me was reckoning. There will be a reckoning for that. Um, not a punishment. There is nothing, there is no judgment. Whatever happens, happens. Everything that happens is a gift. Everything that happens has a purpose. And so without judging, um, it's like if you go to one extreme, chances are that something will happen to undermine that, that to bring you back to center. So I hope that's clear. I kind of muddled that a bit. But anyway, so, so those are your three cards. Number one was squirrel. Number two was salmon. Number three was lizard. So, where is my drum? Hold on, I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. La, 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 la. I can sing and entertain you on dog. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Hello. All right, got my drum. So we're going to do um, a little meditation. So like I said at the beginning, if you came in late, you may not have heard, but I've been trying to leave time at the end of this to do a quick guided meditation um, where you get to go in and whichever card or one of the cards you chose, you get to talk to that animal personally and see what their message is. I'm going to close the window so we don't get disturbed by motorcycles and such. Um, 
is like I said, any, all the things that I just said, that is my impression. That is what I've come to know. That is my connection with the animals. But it may not be the whole truth for you. It may not be exactly right. There might be a whole nother message that animal has for you. Um, but dang it, Valerie, I want a blizzard now too. Um, anyway, <sighs> anyway, so we're going to do a quick meditation. I'm just going to drum to kind of hold the energy and we're going to go meet these animals. So if you had more than one, pick one. You can always go back and re-listen to this. I will save this to my Facebook page and I will also upload it to my Perching Wolf Studios YouTube channel. And so it's always going to be there. If you pick more than one card, do one now, and then you can go back and re-watch this, re-listen to this guided meditation, and check with the other animal. And in fact, you could even go back and re-watch any of the other Monday medicine card reading things that I've done. Choose a card, and then come and watch this, this one, and go through the guided meditation to see what that animal means to you right now. All right, so let's take a deep breath. Hold it for a moment. Let it go. Feel yourself totally supported by the chair, couch, the floor, the earth, whatever you are sitting.
arrive, welcome them and thank them for their wisdom, thank them for their help. And I'm going to be quiet now for a minute or two and allow them to tell you what their message is. So sit back and listen, ask them, what is your personal message for me? How have you come to help me? teaching classes in person because <laughs> it's like I like want instant gratification I want to know how that went for people but we can't do that over the Facebook live but I do hope that was useful I hope that was helpful and if nothing else I want to open that sense of curiosity that sense of connection from your heart to know that you you are worthy and able to receive your own guidance. Your heart is your authority and you can receive your own guidance. Your spirit guides, your ancestors, your angels, they are all around you at all times. If you knew how surrounded you were, 
how protected you were, you would never worry again. So I hope that was helpful. Like I said, if you didn't get a message, if you want to re-listen to this, I will upload this to my um, YouTube channel. I will also save it here to my Facebook page. And um, again, like even during the week, if some animal appears to you, like, I wonder what their message is, feel free to use this video, this guided meditation to tune in yourself to find out, excuse me, to unravel that own little ribbon of wisdom. So anyway, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me again. You don't really realize it probably, but your presence here makes a huge difference to me. I can feel you. It, it affects which animals come up. It affects what I say, what I learn by what I say. So it's a very mutual benefit. I thank you for that. Um, um, this is my, well, this is one of my last chances to mention that um, this coming Friday, if you are interested in shamanism, if you've been listening to me for a while and are curious about shamanism and the things I talk about, then I am teaching a class, an introduction to shamanic journey. This coming Friday, it'll be on Zoom, um, and it'll be from 2 to 5 in the afternoon. So it's a three-hour class. It's only $100. Um, if you're curious... You can check out my website, perchingwolfstudios.net. Um, the information is up there along with the link, my PayPal and my Venmo, that you can pay with, pay for it. And if you, once you do that, I will send you the Zoom link and I will see you there on Friday. And the thing about this class, again, like by adding the meditation at the end of these readings, it's not just a lecture. It's like the first part is kind of luxury. I tell you what, about the history of shamanism and what it is and kind of the shamanic view of the universe, etc. And then in the second part, um, I actually teach you experientially how to perform a shamanic journey, how to use the drum beat to journey to the spirit realms to meet your power animal spirit guide. Um, so it, there is definitely something that you take away from it in an experience. Um, when I first took this, basically the same class back 15 years ago-ish, it changed my life, literally. And so once you know how to do this, then everything opens up. You have unlimited possibilities. And if you want, if you take it, you enjoy it, and you want to continue, I do have options between a new course I'll be teaching, a year-long course, um, as well as one-on-one -on -one mentoring if that is more up your alley. So um, let me know if any of that interests you. We'll get you signed up and get you on the Zoom and go from there. So um, I think that is it. So thank you again so much for joining me. I look forward to this every week. I'm tired from, from doing readings all day long, but I can't wait to get home to do this one because this is so, it's, it's nurturing for me as well. So I hope you find it that way as well. Um, make sure, running through my mental Rolodex to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. So thank you for coming. I will see you next week. Feel free to share this. Um, video. Feel free to invite your friends next week. Um, <clears throat> feel free to go on to my YouTube channel and look back over the <clears throat> over years worth of these. You know, which uh, just pick one, choose a number, and go because it's just as vital watching it in repeat as it was the first time you watched it live. Um, so anyway, thank you again so much for joining me. I really enjoy this, and so until we meet again, know that I love you, that I see you, and that I honor you. So have a wonderful week, everyone. Connect with your spirit animals. 
Don't do everything yourself. Surrender some of that control and open to that wisdom and go shining. All right? I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.